Hello and welcome to the Admin Bar, the community that helps you streamline your processes, sharpen your skills, and demand higher paying projects. My name is Kyle Van Dusen from Ogle Web Design, just outside of Fort Worth, Texas in a little tiny town. And with me from another little tiny town is Matthew Siebert from Matthew Siebert Design. How are things going this morning? Well, it's going pretty well. I do enjoy the tiny towns. <laughs> tiny town. I think we're going to be talking about that a little bit today. We are. That's why I brought up that I live in a tiny town because we're going to talk about tiny towns. But before we start talking about tiny towns we do have a tiny message from this week's show sponsor do you wake up in the middle of the night because you don't own official admin bar swag well have we a surprise for you announcing the official admin bar swag shop if you too need more amounts of tab in your life the admin bar swag shop can help you gain a fresh new look let just one person among thousands of people tell you about the amazing benefits they gained from wearing official admin bar gear i was feeling tired my wife heard about official tab swag on the radio. After taking it, I feel full of pep. Yes, folks, so confident are we that the official tab swag shop can help you. That if you aren't getting enough tab in your life, we offer you this guarantee. Order just one of our fine products today, and within just one week, you'll feel stronger, peppier, in seven days, more vital and alive. You have nothing to lose, everything to gain. Order your tab swag today. All right. Today we are talking to the Admin Bar's own member, Jennifer Moss from Moss Webworks. And interestingly enough, babynames.com, the founder of babynames.com. Uh, her, Matt, and myself all share the experience of living and operating our business out of a small community. So me and Jennifer had started talking about this a while back, kind of different ways we market with our business, market our business, uh, living in a small community and having kind of a small pool to pull from. So let's dive into today's topic. All right, so let's jump into this. And Jennifer, why don't you start by telling everybody a little bit about yourself and how you found yourself on the admin bar today? How'd you get here? Well, my name is Jennifer Moss, and I own a small town agency called Moss Webworks. I'm also the founder and CEO of babynames.com, which is a site that many people have heard of because it's been around since 1996. And I don't know how I found you most probably on Facebook from the group. Um, and I have to say, it's been one of the most supportive and fun groups um, that I've ever been a part of specifically for WordPress development. I've been a part of many other WordPress groups, but um, everyone is so generous and helpful in this group. And and I love to give back too. So, you know, kudos for that. Man, that's, thank you awesome. very much. It feels really good to hear. Yeah, yeah, I think we lucked into it. We just have the right mix of people. Like, yeah. I don't know. It's just a good vibe. Like, mm -hmm. it's, it's a nice great vibe. But that comes from above. It comes from the moderators. So, well, I'll know, give that credit. <laughs> no, <laughs> when it comes to the, the Facebook awesome. side of things, Kyle gets all, like all of the credit. Because <laughs> I waste way more time on there. <laughs> well, tell me, you, you mentioned babynames.com. And I right. imagine that is a pretty busy site because every time we've had to name, a baby we were definitely going to baby naming sites and i won't i won't baby name any name baby name competitors but Thank i'm you. sure there are some of those but <laughs> yeah. i can imagine babynames.com gets a lot of traffic how did you end up making babynames.com well it was the first name site online um before the internet was open for public use i was a software developer so i specialized in creating database driven software applications and um, I had created a software that had part, it was a baby book that had a names database component to it. So when the internet did open, I just wanted to jump right on and experiment with um, the platform. And I wanted to build, 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 because I thought this was so cool. And I had this database. And so I just slapped it online, basically. And it was my personal home page. Um, I hadn't even registered the name yet. But I did put it into this little thing called Yahoo, which was the only search engine at the time. And people started just coming to the site and using the database. My traffic was crazy. And so I thought, hmm, maybe I should register a domain name. And at the time, babynames.com was available. I was lucky. Uh, and 
I even like sat there and thought for a minute because you had to buy two years at a time and it was $50 a year. So That's my investment steep. was a hundred dollars. <laughs> and I was just like, can I afford this for this crazy thing that I'm doing on the side? And luckily I just press that button by and you know the rest is kind of history <laughs> well, i need you to influence this list a little bit though we purposely picked our kids names to a be very short because my last name is so long and b like not be in the top 10 like that was at least a criteria mm -hmm. and now like my son's name's owen and he's like number four on your list now so we got to know down a little bit <laughs> i think i'm with the person who can control this now so yeah <laughs> i don't know if i can control it <laughs> but that's you know people hear names and they think they're so unusual but you don't realize that you know thousands of other parents are hearing the same name you know it could have been from owen wilson or sure. from someone else and it sticks in your head but everyone else is doing the same thing and that's how name trends come about so i've learned a lot about names and naming yeah in the I'm past sure. 23 years yeah definitely <laughs> <laughs> well, that's awesome. Well, yeah. So uh, today we definitely want to talk about uh, something all three of us kind of have in common is we're not in a huge, uh, huge city with uh, millions of people in it. So our agency work, you know, a lot of us tend to do work locally or, or with people that are near us. Uh, so there's some challenges that come with that when you kind of you live in a community where everybody knows everybody, uh, you know, your competitors face to face. Um, you know, and, and you have kind of a limited pool to pull from. Um, so we want to kind of dive into that a little bit and take kind of all three of our experience and kind of talk about some things that could help people find some ways that they can find more business in a small market. So tell us a little bit about what the what the web development um, and business scene is where you live, Jennifer. So I grew up in Chicago and then lived in Los Angeles for 22 years. And in 2011, I um, realized my dream of moving to the mountains. So I live in a small town that's on the way to Yosemite National Park. Uh, and um, there's about 10,000 full-time residents. And so that's how I got here. It's beautiful, mountainous, trees, rivers, just like, it, you know, I say it looks like that screensaver that we all had. You know? <laughs> right. <laughs> so I can just look out the window and see that now. Um, but uh, when I got here, I realized that a lot of the local businesses either did not have a website or they had a poorly designed website or it was old and outdated. And so I thought, you know, I, I should really just hang up my shingle. And I'd already started in L.A. making WordPress sites. I'd been doing it for a while. And uh, so I kind of just hung up my shingle and got used to the community and the business community. And But I was an outsider. So I had to kind of just get to know people and establish myself here. Yeah. So that's how I got here. And that's how I opened my business here. Yeah. And Matt, how about, why don't you kind of set the scene of what it's like where you're at, uh, you know, as far as local business and, and the work you do locally? Well, um, let me, let me check this real quick. Um, we already looked up your name on babynames.com. It's like, <laughs> no, so uh, the, the total population uh, where I live is double where uh, where Jennifer is, so it's it's twenty thousand four hundred and forty two people, um, so still you know fairly small, but um, man, yeah, I mean, the the brunt of of my clients do come from this area, but I do have them elsewhere as well, um, and I think like a lot of that just it it kind of happens naturally. It kind of happens organically. And right. I mean, in the, the life of my business, I, I think I've probably spent maybe $500 in marketing in the last 10 years. <laughs> and I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that I do come from a smaller town where everybody knows everybody. And, you know, my, my very first client uh, was very well connected, you know, like he knew everybody. So good work begets good work. And that first client started, uh, you know, telling people about me and uh, showing my work around and that that gained a lot of interest. Um, similarly, for the people that are like further out of, uh, I mean, one of my clients is in Australia and 
again, that just formed as a as a normal type of relationship type thing where, um, you know, my, my very first tattoo I got from Australian graphic designer and uh, the guy's awesome. If you want to check out his work, it's uh, freakdesign.au. Okay, really cool, cool. stuff. Yeah. But, um, you know, he kind of like mentored me a little bit and he had a friend that uh, was also in Australia and the guy produced uh, or was thinking at the time of producing snowboards and uh, he flew into New York City at one point and I was like, that's like four hours away. I'd love to meet this guy in person. So a friend of mine and myself drove down there. We hung out for like all of 20 minutes, maybe. Um, And two years after that, like he contacted me and he's like, hey, like we met, I like you. We're going to, we're going to, you know, do the whole snowboard thing. And, uh, four snowboard designs later, like, you know, it, it's really just about relationships when it, when it boils down to it. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll say, I might have you all beat on the population thing. I just looked it up. Granbury, Texas, 9,900. Whoa. (laughs) (laughs) You win. (laughs) <laughs> yeah so and, and the town yeah, I'm, I'm living in the big city here yeah, <laughs> yeah. you are uh you know I, I just moved here a little over a year ago so i've kind of i'm kind of still in that outsider mode and especially when you're when you're in a small community it's very easy to tell who's been around here a long time and stuff but the town i came from before which is only a couple hours away from here uh it wasn't much bigger um probably around the same size uh, but I spent a lot of time there. But, you know, like you both said, a lot of it's just relationship building and, and starting to connect with people. And nice. so let's talk about a little bit about how we can do that. Um, I want to kind of talk about how we can do that in a personal way and through, you know, w- we make websites. So obviously part of our marketing is our own website. So let's talk a little bit first about uh, some some ways you've been able to build those relationships and start getting uh, business, just making personal outside of your computer connection. Right. So uh, I'll kick us off. I think my first, my first thing I ever did was um, I was doing volunteering with a nonprofit organization and uh, that had nothing to do with website or design or anything like that. Uh, and they were having trouble with their website developer and asked me to help out on a project. They asked me if I could do it at the time I was working as a graphic designer at another company. So, you know, I was just the person who uses a computer. So, you know, I, I'm IT and design and everything else to mm-hmm. them. Uh, I said, well, you know, I don't, I don't know how to do it, but I'd be glad to take a look. And, uh, you know, from there, once, once I started doing work for them, they started recommending me to a lot of people. And, and I've really found that some of those nonprofit connections are really nice because nonprofits have a board. Uh, usually the board is full of people in the town who want to be seen as the person on the board. And they're usually really well connected people. Um, so, you know, that's a, an easy in. If you can do some work for a nonprofit, if you're looking to get started, do some work for a nonprofit that you you might have passion for or, or something you think is good, uh, good for the community. And you can make a lot of connections through that because there's there's going to be a lot of other people that care about that same cause and it's a good way in. So that was that's advice that I've given a lot of people uh, over time and something that I'm really thankful that I kind of accidentally stumbled into. So uh, why don't you why don't you give us some pointers, uh, Jennifer? Well, the first thing I did was join the chamber. And I did that back in LA as well. And it's been really helpful specifically in the small community because it allowed me to get to know the business community on a personal level, like you said. Um, I went to meetings. um, We have networking events. We have a women's contingent of the chamber. And so I got to know, and it is a volunteer organization too, as you say, Mm -hmm. but specifically it let me understand who were the players here in town and um, allowed them to get to know me on a personal level, like you said, because that is so important. And Matt said that too, is your personal brand and your reputation is everything in a small town. Mm -hmm. So, and if you're new, you know, they've grown up with people around town who they do business with. But when you're new to town, they don't necessarily trust you or know who you are. So it's great to get out there and talk to people, not even pitching them, but letting them get to know you personally, who you are, why I moved to the mountains and why it's so important to me. Um, And then that sticks in their head because then the next time they need help with their website, 
or somebody they know needs help with the website, they're like, oh, I have a card right here. Or, you know, I just met this woman the other day who's got an agency. So you stick in their head because they like you and personality right. has a lot to do with it. Um, the other thing I did was um, I sought out anchor clients. So the chamber being one of them, um, they had a terrible, terrible site and the membership system didn't work. And I just, I pitched do. them for about three years before they said, yeah, we're ready now to redo our site and we're going to take bids and you had to be a chamber member, which I was, thank God. And so they, I think they had six people apply and I won the contract um, and redid the chamber site, which was really visible, obviously, mm -hmm. to not only the um, business community, but the community at large, because we have a community calendar on there. Um, the other anchor site that I went after was the hyperlocal news site. There is one site here that does local news. And their site was also outdated. It crashed a lot. And so I contacted the owner of that site and she was like, hallelujah, <laughs> I hate my <laughs> sight. If you can help me, you know, do whatever you can. And it turned out that it was on Joomla and they had already, they had 7,000 articles published. And every time there was a major, like a fire in the area and everyone went to the site to see what was happening and there was a spike in traffic, it crashed. And so she's like, I want to make it better. And I said, I can help you make it better. Um, and so obviously that was another anchor client because every single person in town goes to that site. Mm -hmm. And when they saw the redesign and were impressed with the redesign, and I know on the admin bar on Facebook, we talked about putting your little credit in the footer. You know, that was, that was a, a big thread we talked thread. about. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You, you can make sure I did that, <laughs> that my name was on both of those sites. And I don't ask and I don't put it in the contract. I just do it. And nobody has had any issue with my credit in the footer. But, um, you know, establishing yourself and personally, like you said, looking for anchor clients, definitely joining the chamber or any other business networking organization, I think is really critical in a smaller community. So um, to, to kind of branch into the same, well, not branch, but continue into the same path, um, you guys both started with nonprofits. Um, I sort of did too. Like that first client that I talked about was, uh, it was a nonprofit, but more of a, uh, like a festival. Um, mm -hmm. And I've, I've worked with them for the last nine years or so. The, uh, this is actually the first year that I'm not working with them because the guy that I previously mentioned is no longer on the board. And uh, I, I've always said to him, when you leave, I leave as well. So that <laughs> happened. But uh, yeah, no, so that's funny that, uh, that all three of us started with that type of nonprofit that has somebody or a, a group of people that kind of know and have connections already. Like that, right. that and really does I, I've help. always felt it was important to give back. And I choose mm -hmm. one nonprofit a year to donate my services to as well, um, because that's important to me. Yeah. So I've done everything from, you know, the Kiwanis to uh, cat rescue <laughs> to music organizations. Um, and, you know, I don't have a lot of time to donate, but I do make a point to donate because that's important to me yeah, as well. Absolutely. <clears throat> I agree. And, uh, you know, this made me think before we kind of move on to the digital side of how we how we kind of do this in a small community. Uh, Doug posted in the group uh, back on August 22nd. I'll try to put a link to this in the show notes, but he was kind of talking about doing some local networking and, you know, said, you know, like if you're such a web web wizard, what are you doing here? And he talked about, you know, if if somebody's looking for a, a roofer or a plumber, they probably have some kind of emergency. They pick up their phone. They, you know, they Google roofer real quick and they try to get somebody on the phone. So um, marketing those types of business on the on a website makes a ton of sense because that's how people are going to find it. But, you know, and I'll just read what he said here. He said, but as a digital marketer, uh, looking at the roofer or plumber as a potential client, they don't even necessarily know they need me. If they do, they might not even know what to search for. Um, and I think that's pretty interesting because, you know, our business is different than that of a lot of businesses we serve. 
a, a lot of people want to make some kind of connection first before they just uh, randomly call a, a web design company. And, and in fact, the phone calls that I get that are just, I can tell immediately they're just Googling companies and, and trying to find a price right away or something. Those are usually not really great customers either. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think, you know, we kind of do have to position ourselves a little bit differently than some of those services that, that are, um, you know, more emergency based or, or you know, right. one plumber might be pretty much the same as another plumber. I'm sure a plumber would disagree, but, you know, <laughs> um, for the most part. Uh, so let's 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 switch a little bit to kind of the digital side of it. Obviously, that's where we're all probably going to feel more comfortable because uh, not all of us like going to chamber meetings and <laughs> and getting out in public face to face. We kind of like our little caves we sit in, um, you know, one advantage that we all have being in a small community is it makes SEO a lot easier. You mm-hmm. know, if you Google website design in Granbury, Texas, you'll find <laughs> my name a lot of times. Um, yeah. I do have competitors here. There's probably six or seven com- like legitimate companies that offer the same service as me and then several freelancers. Uh, but being able to climb in the search results was pretty easy. Um, but then I, I try to think, where would I be if I lived in downtown Dallas instead? Exactly, and, yeah. And I really had a bigger mountain to climb. So, you know, uh, I, I actually did some, I went through my Airtable database where I had all my customers listed. And I went through and marked how they found me. And I either put, you know, personal connection, uh, SEO, or... Uh, an online connection, like somebody I met through the admin bar. Um, and a good chunk of those were clients, current clients that I have were people who just did find me uh, Googling or, you know, coming across my website. So, you know, it's definitely something that you do, you know, while you, you might feel you're at a disadvantage in a small community, the fact that you can rank your company a lot faster is is definitely an advantage. So Jennifer, why don't you kind of tell us about uh, how that works for you, what kind of online marketing you do and what kind of uh, business you pick up from that. Well, it's funny because like I said, we this community was probably about 20 years behind when I got here. Mine too. I got people said, I don't understand why I need a website. <laughs> you know? I still get that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, <laughs> a, that's a point a and a topic that I definitely page. want to, uh, there's a point of contention <laughs> there that, uh Yeah. How do look? So answer this one first, but okay. I'm going to follow up with a, another question that's going to be in line, and you may answer it here anyway. We'll mm-hmm. see. Okay. Um, so, and the you know the second you talked about, you have to kind of educate your customers. So that was part of it. They didn't know what SEO was. They were still using the phone book. They mm-hmm. still do use the phone book. It's about this big. Um, so. <laughs> So it was a matter of letting them know. And I've done some community presentations. In fact, I just did one about a week and a half ago on security, online security. Um, And I think that's really important too. And that puts my business out there as well. But um, one thing about our community, which is a little different, is um, we have 6 million tourists coming through our town every year because we are the last stop on the way to Yosemite. So we really have... Um, my customers have two different kinds of customers. Mm-hmm. They have local customers and then they have the tourist trade. And one thing that I really pitched right off the bat is that this is how the tourists are seeing your site. Um, and they, if that didn't register to them. And I'm like, you For need to have... For the folks that are uh, listening on the podcast, she's holding up her phone. I'm holding up my phone. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. Like you need a mobile enabled site. And yeah. so that was kind of what I concentrated on and educated them on like your site has to, because a hundred percent of the tourists are going to be looking for your services or your uh, restaurant or your store on their phones. Um, so I pitched that as well. And of course, you know, like Kyle said, it was really easy to rise up in, in uh, the local search results. That was kind of a no brainer other than that you had to put a physical address in. Um, but I kind of skirted around that by putting in the post office address, which they Me let too. you do now. <laughs> they let you do that. So, um, so I did that. And uh, so, you know, it, it's just a matter of education. But yeah, a lot of them don't want to email or text back and forth. A lot of them want to speak to you either face to face or on the phone. They Mm -hmm. really want the personal connection. So I can make the most beautiful 
you know, portfolio site, I can and refer them to that. But I think the number one sales pitch has to be person to person. Yeah. I mean, you sell yourself before you sell your business for sure. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, I, I, go ahead. No, the, uh, the question that, uh, that kind of comes up and, and Jennifer, I think I know your answer because you have 6 million tourists, but, um, <laughs> You know, one of the uh, the points of contention that uh, that I've found is, you know, in a small town, why should they? Why should they, you know, make their their website perform better if there's such a small pool of competition, if mm -hmm. any? I mean, we have a candy shop here in Keene, and it's the only candy shop within, you know, how twenty four, twenty five, fifty miles. Like I don't know. So you know, why? Why do that? Why invest in that? Um, I've gotten that a lot. You know, it's like, I don't need advertising. I don't need a website. I'm, you know, my plumber said that, <laughs> talking about plumbers. <laughs> yeah, actually like, contractors, a lot of, uh, or yeah. I've found that a lot of contractors are just like, no, I've got my client base. I've got more than enough business. Yeah. And I just yeah. let it go um, because eventually they'll refer me to somebody else mm -hmm. or they'll come around and say, you know, I kind of do need a website because someone asked me for photos of my work, you know, mm -hmm. and I, all I had Didn't was on my phone. It. So, um, you know, I just let it go just like any customer or client who doesn't hire you and just say, okay, well, keep me in mind for any future work. And that's and a this... phenomenal way of doing it because it keeps you, you know, personable and in, uh, in that good, like open type of, uh, type of frame. So yeah, right. it leaves the door open and in doing that, you know, they may not see the value or like because of the the lack of competition but yeah they've got friends and they're gonna talk right exactly. yeah and i wonder too you know uh matt davies with funnel packs is you know a lot of that is based around for our businesses trying to eliminate this feast or famine cycle that i think we all go through where all of a sudden we're real busy then we're real slow then we're real busy and we're pulling our hair out because we can't just keep this steady stream right. of you know, one job to the next to the next forever, it, it's difficult to do. And that and that's something you can talk with your clients about as well. You know, for the plumber that says, Oh, I got I got way, way more work than I can do. Well, he might that second. Um, but mm -hmm. they go through those same waves in their business too. And that might be an opportunity for you to explain to them, yeah, but if you can keep if you if you can have an online presence and keep this going when people come into the community as the community grows, you know you'll be the one everybody looks to, and you can try to keep that a little bit steadier in the future mm -hmm. rather than you know uh, too big, too small, uh, too busy, too slow. And that kind of brings us to the maintenance plan too, mm -hmm. which is something I kind of fought at first, um, and my community had asked me for it. Really? I just wow. want somebody to maintain my site. And I'm like, oh, I'm too busy creating new sites. I can't do that. I don't want to be available 24 seven. But then I realized, you know, I'm passing up this steady income that could be coming yeah, in every that month. Safety net, that, that. <laughs> exactly. And so I created a care plan that does not include 24 seven support. Mm -hmm. um, and I realized I can design it the way I want to design it. Um, and so I did that and now I have, I think there's, you know, 12 to 15 clients on it right now and a couple more that's coming on. Um, and that really helped my business, obviously that really grew it. And again, when they're working with you on a monthly basis or they see that you're taking care of them, um, you're more likely to be referred to other people as well. Yeah. Yeah. I think the, the care plan thing that... I just can't imagine doing this business without that that monthly recurring revenue of some sort. Maybe it's not yeah. exactly a care plan, but you know it's it, it's difficult. But you know, maybe you know, maybe I chalk this up a lot of times to being in like rural Texas. Uh, both of where both of you are might be a little bit further into civilization than where <laughs> I am. Uh, that might be a nice way of putting it. Um, but you know, with a lot of my clients, the the care plans are really attractive to them because they don't understand a website. Right. They don't understand what's going on with it. Uh, where I have to bridge that gap is explaining to them without like fear mongering, but explaining to them, it, you know, it's like your car or whatever. You got to maintain it. It's got to have these things happening to it. Or, you know, maybe don't even bother making the website. 
because mm-hmm. you're, it, it's not going to work for you if you don't maintain it. And most of my local clients, you know, I have a much better conversion rate on care plans when I'm developing for somebody locally. And part of that maybe is just the face to face relationship part of it. But, uh, you know, the local clients, the small businesses that don't don't look for a website developer anywhere in the world, like they have to have somebody local, like they can only see the people that are here in front of them. I think they're a lot more likely to get on care plans um, because they just need somebody to do that for them. Yeah. Just do it for me is what they say, (laughs) you know? (laughs) Yeah. And, you know, there's there's you know, there's an advantage to being a big fish in a small pond. Um, and I don't think there's really anything wrong with that. Sure, I'd like to be, you know, uh, you know, make a million dollars and all these things. But, you know, it, it's a lot easier, just like it was easier to climb search engine rankings here locally. It's a lot easier to kind of get that recognition and that um, notoriety in your own town. Like you talked about going in and talking about uh, online security, you know, all those kinds of things really make you stand out. And it's just so much easier to stand out when you're in a, in a small town like that. So I think, you know, the, the natural inclination would be for people to feel like, oh, it's so hard in a small town because there's not enough people or, you know, I have a competitor who's been here longer than me. Um, and yeah, there are those obstacles, but there's a lot of advantages too, you know? So I think people need to just think about those things different. Like what you said, I think was brilliant about, uh, there's all these tourists, uh, and their tourists aren't lugging, lugging their desktops around with them. Um, the clients, your clients probably didn't think of that. And the fact that you can just come in there with that expertise and like, look at this problem from a different, a different viewpoint, I think makes a lot of difference. And I think that's something we could all probably learn from. And one thing that I was really worried about was that I was going to run out of work, that there's such a small town that what if I just created everyone's website and that's that. But, you know, it really never happened. There's always ongoing work. And when I feel like I'm coming to a close and and I'm like, what's going to happen next? Then I get two more calls. It's Mm -hmm. just, you know, I'm kind of lucky that way. And that it's always been pretty steady. And of course, when it does wane, then I work on my own site, Baby Names, and I take time to just put development time into that. So I do have a fallback. Um, But it really, it hasn't really waned for a, a huge amount of time for me. Yeah, and I wonder how that, you know, we need the other person on this call too, the person in the middle of a big city. I wonder if that uh, makes a difference too, because I, I, f- I do feel like that's like, like you mentioned being lucky. Like I felt like I've kind of lucked out into that too, where I hadn't gone huge stretches of time without work. And I think Matt's mm-hmm. kind of the same way on that. Yeah. So if anybody's listening that, uh, that thinks that they'd, <laughs> they're, they're in a big city and that they've positioned themselves well, we'd, we'd, That'd be a cool conversation to have. Yeah. Let's have this opposite conversation too. No doubt. All right. I did want to talk about like the mistakes I made. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Let's do it. That sounds great. Um, I think one mistake, the biggest mistake I made was I undervalued my services when Mm. I first opened up shop because I thought this is a smaller town. The income level is lower than West Los Angeles. You know, I came from a pretty affluent community and um it's a whole just different vibe up here and i undervalued myself and i made my prices really cheap so i was doing so much work for so little income and at the end of the year when i was doing my taxes i was like oh my god surely i made more than that <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think that's I a very felt like i was pitfall. working constantly yeah so i slowly you know raised my rates not to be obvious about it but now i feel comfortable that i am actually getting paid my worth without you know i can't create ten thousand dollar brochure sites that that won't fly here you know but i've found the happy medium between getting paid what i'm worth and what the community can afford. Yeah. No, it's, yeah, it's that- similar to me. I mean, when I when I started out, man, I was I was severely undercharging, and I'm pretty sure Kyle has the same uh, same story. And I'm still kind of um, undercharging. I mean, for people that have been following the podcast, we've mentioned it before. Like the first uh, the first website that I built uh, in partnership with Kyle. What was it like? Eight hundred and fifty bucks. Man, that was that was yeah. terrible. Yeah. Site yeah. sucks. Yeah. <laughs> Won't say what it is. 
No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I think, you know, I, I do get, I probably do get people who are more price conscious when it's local customers because I, I, I would say about half my work is from people within driving distance of me and the other half is all over. But I think the people who reach out to me locally are more price conscious than the mm-hmm. people who who have sought me out or found me, uh, you know, through online connections where we don't have the people that don't have this barrier of proximity, you know, that understand, you know, it's the internet and we can work with somebody across the globe. It's not a big deal. It's not weird. Uh, Mm -hmm. You know, my clients here locally just couldn't even fathom that. And I think those types of people are probably more likely to be price conscious as well. Yeah. And I, I would say the second mistake I made was, as a developer, you do want to kind of hide out in your cave and you, you know, you don't want to talk to people and you're like, ah, I'm not going to answer the phone, you know, cause I don't want to talk to people. Um, but you can't do that in a small yeah. town. And I've even gotten to the point, even as an introvert to be able to actually go out and visit my clients on a regular basis and check in with them personally. Cause I can do it. It's a small town. I can drive to town and and just visit them. Hey, how's it going? Is there anything? Because they might not even necessarily contact me, but they have something they do want to change on the site, you mm-hmm. know? So yeah, and that's it not really, just good for, you know, for uh, client relationships, but that's good for your own like mental health, just getting out. Yeah, and, exactly. Like, you know, I mean, so many of us sit in, a, in an office alone all day. So yeah, get out, go talk to your clients and yeah. like, feel good, you know, like, and it, they appreciate it, it or even yeah. take them to lunch, you know, right. and, um, it's a business expense, by yeah, the way. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, just keep creating and, and perpetuating that personal connection. And they really appreciate that. And you do have to answer the phone <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. period. You have to talk to them. And, and one thing I think me and Matt have talked about this too, and I bet you've experienced it where you live. A lot of business owners uh, don't just own one business. Right. You never know who you're going to talk to and come to find out, oh, they also own three other businesses or four other businesses yeah. in town. And it's mm-hmm. pretty, that's actually a lot more common than you might think it is. Yes, definitely. So you never know who you're making connections with. And those people usually have some kind of representation at chambers or on a board mm-hmm. somewhere. Or, you know, th- those are the types of people that are involved in those kinds of things. Yeah. And, you know, again, when you show up at chamber, like, I think we all have like a bit of imposter syndrome. I have it constantly doing this. There's like, you know, 5,000 people in our group that are way better at my job than I am. Um, so why am I up here talking? Uh, I think we all kind of feel that way, but go back to the big fish in a small pond thing. Like, you know, when I show up and uh, I show up and talk on the admin bar and I'm kind of half-assed, uh, <laughs> I show up and talk in person to like people in my community and they're like, damn, that guy's smart. So, you know, uh, it has its advantages that way too. I don't have that issue <laughs> just because I've been in the business for so long. Um, I'm pretty confident in my abilities. Well, I'm not. So <laughs> everybody tell me how good I am or I'm going to cry. Aww, you're <laughs> awesome, Kyle. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, we, we are running up against time here, so I don't want to keep everybody too long, but I do appreciate you coming on and talking about this. And like Matt mm-hmm. said, if there's somebody who, who has the opposite end of this, the the big city experience that wants to come on and kind of talk about this from the other perspective. I'd be interested in hearing that. And also if you want to leave comments Mm -hmm. in the group or, uh, you know, start a thread about kind of some more advice you might have dealing with a a small town community and how you've won business that way. I think we'd all benefit from hearing for that. So Matt, is there anything I did not include that I didn't get to that you'd like to? No. (laughs) <laughs> I love when I ask like a 500 minute Short question. And sweet. Like, eh. Well, thank you for having me. I really appreciate yes, it. I'm glad. Um, I, I'm glad to finally have you on. This has been in the works for a while and yeah. for being true. an awesome member of the community. Yeah, uh, your you. posts and comments and stuff always stand out. And I know it's appreciated by many, many folks in the group. So thank well, you. I love belonging. Awesome. All right, guys. Well, as a reminder, if this group helps you in any way, the easiest way to help us is to share and like our content, subscribe to our channel and use our affiliate links. It's all free. It takes little time and it greatly helps support the show. That is all for now. We, all three of us will catch you inside the group. Bye-bye. Bye.